So we're now going to take a quick look at the proof that the limit is well defined. So what does this mean? So the proposition says the following. So it says that if a n tends to l and a n tends to m, this means that l and m are the same numbers. And of course, this is when n tends to infinity. This is basically telling us that when we write lim n goes to infinity, a n is equal to l, then this equality here is actually an equality. So this symbol makes sense as in the way we intend it to. Because I mean, the definition for the, the limit is sufficiently complicated that it could be that multiple numbers that pretend to be the limit would satisfy it, okay? We could write a silly definition allowing that. And then of course we wouldn't be justified in putting an equality sign here, even if we claim so. So now we're just checking that what we're doing makes sense. And in fact, when you go to higher courses in topology, you'll see situations, reasonable situations, where the limit is non-unique, where one sequence has multiple limits. In fact, a sequence can have every point as a limit in an appropriate context. So now let's, I'm going, I'm not going to do the full proof, so I'm going to sketch the proof because the full proof will be an exercise for you. So I'm just going to tell you how to start. So here we know that these two limits hold. So here we know that for every epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a capital N1, let's call it, such that for every N in N, then N bigger than N1 implies a N minus L smaller than epsilon. And for the same epsilon, we know that, that there exists or for every epsilon, we know that there exists an n2 such that n bigger than n2 implies that a n minus m is smaller than epsilon. If I wanted to, I can take a separate epsilon one here and an epsilon two here if I want. I won't be needing this in, that, in this proof. So what does this mean? Well, you can do a proof by contradiction now. So by contradiction, you don't have to, but it's a, a nice way to start. Suppose that L is not equal to M. And here you have two cases. So let's just focus on the case that L is smaller than M. And then on the real line, what happens is that you have your L here, you have your M here. If this holds, you know that M minus L is strictly positive. So I mean, you have a positive distance here, right? Um, and how can you use this? Well, you know that your sequence A N will tend closer and closer to the L. You know that your sequence a n will tend closer and closer to m. So you can get these a n's as close as you want to this point and as close as you want to this point. So since these two guys have a non-zero distance between them, so the distance you can say is m, m minus l, then you ought to be able to get a contradiction. So that's your task. And your weapon here is basically knowing that these two lines hold for every epsilon. So here you have to be clever, and then you have to choose a suitable epsilon, which gives you a contradiction. And the contradiction would perhaps be on the form that zero is strictly bigger than one, or that zero is strictly smaller than zero, or something like this. And this can be obtained by choosing a suitable epsilon here. 